Hello dear Ayurveda enthusiasts and welcome to my channel Vanishri Ayurveda. If you have not watched the first part of Ayurveda on insomnia, I would recommend you to do that before we dive in deeper into the part two of Ayurveda for insomnia. Uh, in the part one, I talked about what insomnia is, what are the causes of insomnia and how it can affect our health on various levels of existence. Now, in the part two of this video, we are going to learn about how Ayurveda looks at insomnia and what is insomnia according to Ayurveda, what factors are responsible to disrupt your sleep. Uh, so the first thing when it comes to insomnia, I would recommend you to first realize the problem. Is it that you're not able to fall asleep or you're not able to stay asleep? These two are totally different things and they're triggered by different doshas or different elements. So identifying first the problem is, is it falling asleep or staying asleep? If you are having trouble falling asleep, it's most of the times an imbalance of pitta that is fire and water element. Uh, if you're having trouble staying asleep, it's mostly a problem of vata, that is air and ether element. So what I would suggest is uh, identifying the problem and then tackling with the right dosha that is causing insomnia. Uh, the second is understanding the qualities of what results in a good restful sleep. Now what qualities do help us to fall asleep? There are a lot of different qualities that work, we work with in Ayurveda, like heavy, cold, light, dry, rough, you know, but the qualities that help to induce sleep or for you to stay asleep are heavy, slow, stable. Okay, now if you're not inviting any of these qualities in your life before you fall asleep, you are going to have troubles for staying asleep or falling asleep. Uh, so most of the times if you have insomnia or you're suffering from insomnia, the qualities you are aggravated in or you're inviting those qualities more before you fall asleep are light, mobile, clear, subtle um, and I would say a very, very like act active mind or activating your brain or your mind before you fall asleep. So that's, that's the mobile quality. Okay, so all these qualities would result in lack of sleep or re result in your mind being activated constantly. Okay, we want to stay away from these qualities and invite more um, slow, grounding, nourishing, soft, smooth, uh, you know, all of these like stable uh, qualities before you fall asleep. Um, the other thing to recognize is most of the times to fall asleep, you need the energy, your energy moving downwards, okay? If your energy is moving upwards, up in your head, you're definitely gonna have trouble falling asleep. So what does that mean? Like not activating your brain or your mind or your thoughts or your emotions right before you go to bed because if that activation happens, all the energy is moving up to your head. We don't want the energy moving up towards our head. We want energy to move down to our feet. So we wanna invite more of the grounding energy in our life to fall asleep or to help us stay asleep for longer periods of time. Um, uh, so what are the tips, what are Ayurvedic tips that would help with, with inviting those qualities that we just talked about? Or what are simple tips that you can uh, implement in your life on a daily basis uh, that would help you uh, experience a deep restful sleep? The first is establishing a nightly routine. Now, what Ayurveda recommends is every dosha has a specific time of working during the day and night. Uh, around 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. at night is a prime pitta time where fire and water element are very, very high in your body. You must have observed this. If you stay awake past 10, 10, 30, you'll get the second wind, right? And then you're all awake, you're all up, and you won't be able to go to deeper cycles of restful sleep for uh, until up to like 2 a.m., 3 a.m. in the morning, right? So to identify 
this it's very important that you need to go to bed before 10 p.m or at the max 10 30 p.m before that pitta hits that pitta's energy hits and before you get that second wind that is the time when your pitta that is fire and water element are cleansing things out of your body you don't want to stay awake then because you're hampering that cleansing system okay um the second is before you go to bed uh, try to do like simple things like maybe self oil massage to ground that vata's erraticness or airiness. You could just use some simple warm or any oil, herbal oil, you ashwagandha bala oil. So we, we have something called as the ashwagandha bala oil. You, this is a very common formulation in Ayurveda. You can use that to just massage yourself from head to toe and then sit in a warm bath or take a warm shower. Uh, for, um, uh, for pittas, we usually recommend doing warm water showers, not too hot or not too cold. They should be very, very tepid. Uh, for a vata person, though, we requ require uh, you to do a hot, hot, hot water shower, as hot as you can tolerate it, so just to ground that vata's cold energy. Um, Another thing that you can do is a cup of herbal tea. Uh, certain herbs induce sleep or they promote healthy sleep. Uh, some of them are chamomile, brahmi, uh, or go to cola. You could do ashwagandha tea. Um, or a simple remedy would be to take a cup of warm milk. If you're dairy intolerant, you can certainly do any alternative milk like a nut milk or oat milk, whichever one you like. And then just add some turmeric, nutmeg, cardamom, and um, cinnamon, oh, sorry, ghee, one teaspoon of ghee to this. And then just boil it and drink this milk right uh, about 30 minutes before you want to fall asleep. Uh, this will um, keep because this drink invites a lot of um, grounding and nourishing qualities in you it will really help you fall asleep and stay asleep better um, another simple thing that you can follow is massaging your scalp in round motions like that just round motions all over with your fingertips just going all over your scalp for about like five to five to ten minutes and the same on your feet like massaging your soles off your feet really really generously with any oil that you want if you want grounding you have to use heavier oils like maybe avocado oil or sunflower oil sesame oil sesame oil would be really good for a vata person as it's a heating oil whereas coconut oil would because it's a cooling oil would be good for a pitta person to fall asleep so uh, using specific kinds of oils on your feet and your scalp and massaging it for about five to ten minutes before you go to bed really helps with that grounding again bringing that grounding energy and major nerve endings are at the bottom of our feet so you're triggering or stimulating them in the right way and you're sending signals for melatonin production in your body around the time you want to fall asleep and ideally this should be done before 10 p.m uh, the other thing that you can observe or maintain is a good sleep hygiene. Now, what is a good sleep hygiene? Uh, first of all, uh, understanding how environmental factors might affect your sleep, even subtly, unknowingly, you're so ignorant about it that you are, it is affecting your sleep. So a poor posture, like getting a good pillow to support your neck, you know, at night if you're sleeping and all of a sudden you start having neck issues, you're tossing and turning throughout the night, you don't want that. So um, you need a comfortable place to, to sleep in. Um, you Most of the times Vata people need a warm room, softer bed, they need ample of covers because they get cold at night. Uh, they would need a night light, a very, very gentle night light and a good, good amount of humidity in the room. If you don't, if, if you don't have enough humidity, Vata people really struggle with dryness in their sinuses uh, and that dryness just keeps them up, like does not let it go, let them go to deeper cycles of rest. Uh, for a Pitta person, ideally the temperature in the room should be cooler and um you very few covers but the people don't need a lot of covers so very few covers um the they usually like firmer beds than softer beds 
uh, and then there should be total darkness and no and the humidity should be less in the room too the reason is that the people are have extremely sensitive senses they cannot tolerate loud sounds or even a little bit of movement or sound or light can can disrupt their sleep immediately so understanding if you're a pitta person and if you have sensitive senses you do not want to trigger those senses at night so using maybe a soft white noise around in the room that would help you stay asleep like a fan oscillating or maybe a, like just plain pink noise or brown noise or white noise in the in the background would help you stay asleep or ocean waves or something like that that will calm your calm your senses and your system down um the other things that you can do is to as i earlier said stop stimulating any of your senses no matter what constitution you are uh, no reading in your bed no watching netflix no binging shows no watching tv in your bed because in a way unknowingly you're kind of triggering those senses to work or act right before you fall asleep uh, so um, avoiding that at least one hour before you fall asleep is going to help with staying asleep. Uh, eliminating any stimulants before you fall asleep would be ideal is alcohol, right? Don't fall asleep with a big glass after you just drank a big glass of wine. That's not going to help because alcohol is very stimulating in nature. Um, coffee, caffeine, right? Or nicotine if you're a smoker. Try to avoid all these stimulants or things that activate your system. Uh, eat a wholesome dinner. Sometimes if you are empty stomach, this is mostly for pitta individuals. If pitta individuals get hangry and if they're hangry or hungry, they cannot fall asleep. So um, understanding that you need a, your stomach to be filled, not right before your bed, but eat a wholesome dinner at least two hours before, two to two and a half hours before your bedtime so that you're not leaving your stomach empty and you're falling asleep with an empty stomach. Sometimes that can keep the people up because that causes a lot of sugar fluctuations in the body. Um, if you're still not, if you still apply all these things and you're still not able to fall asleep, then what can you do? Um, one thing I would re recommend is doing pranayamas, using certain types of pranayamas to induce that fake sleep or that, that signal to induce sleep in your body. Uh, one pranayama is Nadi Shodhana, that is alternative nost alternate nostril breathing. Ujjayi, that is victory, victory breath, victory breathing can see, certainly help. Uh, doing some meditations or yoga nidra, like meditations that, that help you fall asleep, okay? So yoga nidra or um also sometimes doing some proper exercise also helps a whole lot so so that you're tired enough to fall asleep sometimes the problem is that we're just not tired enough to to get a good night's rest right so sometimes exercising for vata people doing sun salutations or bringing in that more warmth of the exercise so doing yoga gentle yoga yin yoga flow yoga for a pitta person sometimes doing high intense workouts helps for them to release their stress and release their high energy um, and then staying active for a pitta person is, is very very calming for their mind so maybe doing a proper exercise or a moon salutations for for a pitta person would be very very ideal uh, you could do certain Techniques to reduce stress, so maybe emotional journaling right before you go to bed, assessing your emotions, what is your emotional condition right now, what is impacting it, is there something that, that, that can be fixed, if, there, if that cannot be fixed, how can you work around it and help yourself reduce the amount of stress that you're going through. Um, the last I would say is to introduce certain supportive herbs. Even if you try doing so many diet and lifestyle things and nothing's working, then ideally introducing some herbs, supportive Ayurvedic herbs, really, really helps. Uh, so one herb is ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is a rejuvenator or a rasayana according to Ayurveda. And it really, really helps calm or ground that vata. For pitta people, 
uh, ashwagandha in my in milder proportions would help a pitta person too uh, it's mostly a rejuvenator and a very uh, supportive uh, herb for sleep or insomnia or any vata disorder in general or even kapha disorder but ashwagandha really helps ground that energy and help you stay asleep for longer times so I hope you got a lot of information out of this video and I hope all the tips and tricks that I told you would help you fall asleep or stay asleep if you're struggling with either of these. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I would recommend to subscribe. Uh, if you want to buy herbs, they're all on my website. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for listening and have a good restful sleep at least six to eight hours without dreams. Stay tuned. Bye.